Can you believe it was this Apple Watch, the Series 7000, better known as the Series Zero, was released back in April of 2015. And between the first generation, across all the other Series Apple Watches available, there's a lot of things that change between that five year gap. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and compare every single generation of Series Apple Watch against each other, as well as compare the two size choices to choose from between each generation and go more about its specs, the improvements, and the speed performance. This will not only make a great buyer's guide, but will also be a good informative video in case you're planning on buying one use and you wanna see if there's a real major difference between the Series 3 or the Series 5 or other discontinued Apple Watch. Ah, oh, that was good. Let's begin. So yes, I have every single generation Apple Watch right here across my table. And the first Apple Watch I want to quickly cover and talk about is, is the Series 7000. Again, this is better known as to be called the Series Zero. Now the last firmware update that the Series Zero received was WatchOS 4. And then now between the Series 1 and 2, these two, the last firmware update that they received was WatchOS 6. So it was really recent. And now the Series 3 and up, newer Apple Watches, they're all still being fully supported by Apple. However, I do think that the Series 3 is on its final legs in terms of future software support by Apple. So since the Series 1 and 2 are both on watchOS 6, they still have support for Force Touch. This was a feature that is removed. So if you want to re-experience the experience, these two Apple Watches still support it, as well as the Series 0. So if you want to get an idea how this hardware used to work, just pick up one of these two generation Apple Watches. So the first generation Apple Watches, these two right here, the one with the bulkier design, they came available in two size choices. A 48 millimeter, which looks like this, and the 42. Being a larger display, of course, means that you can read text a lot better as there's less scrolling involved. But this just shows Apple always redefined or redesigned an Apple Watch every five generation. And with this newer design, you have a larger screen to body ratio, which means text size and images is more pleasant to view, no matter the angle. So there's two choice options of 40 or the 44 millimeter. And in my opinion, both of these sizes are large enough. But me personally, I always go with the larger model because it's easier to capture on camera. Now the Series 3 Apple Watch was the first Apple Watch to receive a cellular connectivity. In other words, it started with the Series 3 that got the cellular option. And then all the internal processors inside all these Apple Watches, excluding the Series 7000, all have a dual core processor. The 7000 was more like an experiment from Apple, which is probably the reason why I got that weird name. But since it sold really well, they kept the design and upgraded the processor, which is why all these newer ones now have a dual core or better. Now the Series 0 all the way to the Series 3 is using the first generation heart rate sensor. And then the Series 4 all the way to the newest, the Series 6 and the SE are all using the more enhanced heart rate sensor, better known as the second generation heart rate sensor. But it's only the Series 4, 5, and 6 that actually has the ECG capabilities, which will allow you to export this file to a PDF to show to a medical profession. The Series 6 is the only one that actually received the new blood oxygen saturation sensor, which will measure your blood oxygen levels. It's not medical grade, but will come close enough. That will give you a rough estimate of your overall health. And just like the heart rate sensor, it monitors this randomly throughout the entire day. Now, as we compare the first generation series Apple Watch, the things that noticeably change on the right side is the new microphone, additional microphone hole on the series two and the three. And then on the other side, again, looks 100% identical, as well as these bands are also able to be swapped from this older series generation body style to the latest newer generation. Apple Watch. As long as it's using the right compatible size band, these bands are 100% compatible across those generations. But between the Series 2 and the Series 3, as it started off with the Series 2, that received a deeper waterproof rating up to 50 meters. This has now been the standard across all newer Apple Watches. So the Series 3, 4, 5, and the SE, and the 6, all have the same wire resistant rating. So that means the Series Zero wasn't wire resistant, but people still showered with it. I remember it still worked just fine. And then the official Series One was the only one that was actually IPX7. So 30 meters wire resistant rating. So as I stated, I have every single generation Apple Watch right in front of me. Just the Series Zero, for some reason, the batteries don't work. And I tried locating a Series Zero that works 
it was really challenging and sometimes the seller is asking way too much. But since it's a single core processor, as soon as we do the performance test, it really wouldn't really matter. We already know it's gonna be super slow. All these screens, all the displays on every single generation Apple Watch is all an OLED display, which is quite impressive. But both the Series 0 and the Series 1 all had a same 450 nits brightness display with eight gigabytes of internal storage and 512 megabytes of RAM. It was until the Series 2 and newer when they received a max 1000 nits of brightness. But it was the Series 2 that was the first Apple Watch to receive a GPS internally. That means you could leave your phone behind and still track your outdoor runs and such without having to carry a phone around you. Then moving along, internal specs of the Series 3, you could have this one in a eight gigabytes configuration if you settled with the non-LTE version, or if you get the LTE version, this will freely upgrade the internal storage from eight to 16 gigs. Internal RAM was also slightly boosted as it had a 768 megabytes. And then as for the Series 4, the standard storage capacity was now 16 gigs. Doesn't matter if you get the non-cellular version or not. It also received one gigabytes of internal RAM. And then moving along, the Series 5 still retained the same max brightness of 1000 nits, but it got the new LTPO hardware. In other words, it has support for the always on display. Internal storage was boosted to 32 gigs and still had one gigabyte of RAM. A unique feature about the Series 5 is it was the first Apple Watch to receive a compass. And then the new Series 6, it's listed to still retain 1000 nit max brightness on its OLED display, but the LTPO hardware is also said to be a lot brighter. And based from my comparisons, I can definitely confirm outdoors or indoors, there's a noticeable brighter difference between the Series 5 and the Series 6. Internally, still has 32 gigabytes of internal storage with one gigabyte of RAM. Now in this test, I have every single Apple Watch labeled on the floor with their screens set to max brightness for us to get a general idea what the screen visibility is really like in a well-lit room. And you could clearly tell that the Series 4 all the way to the Series 6 and the SE are very visible. The Apple Watch SE also has 1000 nits of max brightness. And although it's said to be sharing the same display that's found on the Series 6, it doesn't have the always on display. This could be because it's software locked by Apple. And then of course, internally, the internal chipset found inside each Apple Watch. The quick rundown is this. The Series 7000 had a S1 chip. And then the Series 1 has a S1P. The Series 2 had a S2. The Series 3 has its S3, the Series 4 received the S4, and the Series 5 received an S5, and then the Series 6 has a new S6 chip, which is said to be 20% faster, which we will test in a little bit. The new Apple Watch SE is using an, an S5 chipset that was found on the Series 5. Then outdoors, in direct sunlight, you could definitely tell the screen differences between each generation Apple Watch. Again, the Series 4 and up, the Series 4 and newer, are the ones that are easily, clearly visible, even in direct sunlight. And then if we take the Series 5 and the Series 6, compare them outdoors with the always on display enabled, the Series 6 is easier to read compared to the Series 5, thanks to that brighter always on display enhancement Apple recently released for it. So the Series 0 and the Series 1, as well as the Series 2, both have Bluetooth 4 built into them. The Series 3 had Bluetooth 4.2. And then the Series 4, 5, 6, SE all have Bluetooth 5. But it was until the Series 4 that received the new haptic feedback whenever you rotate the digital crown to give you a more mechanical watch feel. And then of course the Series 4 was the first one to receive an ECG hardware. Series 5 also has this as well as the Series 6. Fall detection is also available on the Series 4, 5, 6, including the SE. And then the Series 5 received the Compass, Series 6 has this as well as the SE. Always on display hardware is only found on the Series 5 and the 6. The hand washing detection is only available on the Series 4, 5, 6, and the SE. The decibel reader is found on the Series 4, 5, 6, SE. The Series 6 is the first Apple Watch to receive support for not just 2.5 gigahertz Wi-Fi broadband network, but now can connect to a 5 gigahertz broadband Wi-Fi network. The Series 6 is also the first Apple Watch to receive a U1 chip, which makes this Apple Watch future-proof for more upcoming features, which Apple has plans for releasing some tile-based competitor accessories that will allow you to 
track your lost items. If these leak rumors become true, the Series 6 is the one that already has this built into it. The Race 2 Speak to Siri is available on the Series 3 and newer Apple Watches. And using the built-in decibel level reader found on the Series 5, I can conclude that the Series 4 and the newer Apple Watch are definitely the loudest. Which reminds me, the Series 0, 1, and 2 aren't as loud as compared to the Series 3, as Siri isn't able to speak back to you verbally on these older Apple Watches. It was until the 3 and the newer ones that Siri was able to speak back. Now, of course, all the first generation accessories are all fully compatible for the first generation Series Apple Watches. And then the newer design, the second generation, starting with the Series 4, are all compatible across all the other Apple Watches as long as you're using the correct size, like a case and screen protector and such. And then all of these Apple Watches, even though they have different battery sizes inside them, are all able to deliver the same all day battery that Apple has been promising for years. As well as they're all able to charge with the same magnetic charging puck. And now when it comes to its overall performance, I taped every single Apple Watch on a sheet so it doesn't move around a lot on the camera. And I made sure every watch is fully turned off. While I was turning them off, I have noticed that the medical card ID was removed on this older generation Apple Watches for some reason. I could have sworn this used to be available. So please confirm in the comment section if you have a Series 3 or older Apple Watch because I could have sworn they used to have the medical ID as well. But nonetheless, from synchronizing each clip as soon as the Apple logo turned on on each Apple Watch, the Series 6, to no surprise, was the first one to boot up, followed by the Series 4, which was really unusual. And then the Apple Watch SE came in third place a second later. The Series 5 came in fourth place, surprisingly. And then in fifth place was the Series 1, sixth place was the Series 2, and seventh place was the Series 3. Now this boot up time performance differences makes me believe that with each firmware update, it does alter the performance of the Apple Watch. But when you're trying to boot up three applications at once, here I done a quick test of me just launching three applications, the activity, alarm, and the app store. The newer Apple Watches were always faster. And uh, the Series 4, I have no idea what was happening. I was having connection issues with my Wi-Fi. I tried everything to make it connect, but it wouldn't connect. But I done this test a couple of times and it was always the same result that the Series 6 was always the fastest, followed by the Series 5. SE4 and the older models. But back to the boot up time differences between all these Apple Watches. This was a very similar result that we saw last time on this video, which you could go ahead and watch, where there was also a noticeable difference in performance when turning on the Apple Watch. And then other creators also encounter a very similar result where some of the older Apple Watches were outperforming the newer ones. And yes, when I was doing the launch app performance test, I made sure every single application on all the Apple Watches were turned off and forcefully shut. But that's basically the full in-depth comparison against every single generation Apple Watch. Oh, and I also almost forgot to mention that the Series 6 did also receive an improved meant in charging rate so it could charge slightly faster compared to every single apple watch available but that is basically it when it comes to this ultimate comparison against every series apple watch that was available in the market so if you enjoyed make sure to hit that like button get subscribed if you haven't already because i have a lot more apple watch content coming to this channel as well as other tech products so make sure you are subscribed but in the meantime if you want to watch more apple watch stuff feel free to watch this video over here as i go through every hidden feature, tips and tricks that there is to know about every single Apple Watch that's on the latest firmware update of watchOS 7. And then this video over here, that's just a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Feel free to watch either or. Again, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.